<sighs> hey, Mr. Snack, yo, what's wrong, man? Why are you crying? Well, you see, you remember when I used to sell candy at school? Yeah, I haven't done that in a very long time, and I'm, I'm down to my last 10 bucks, and I don't know how to make more. Can you tell me a way I can keep making money right now? I've just been out of options, and I think I'm stuck in the hole right now. I don't know what to do. Okay, so based on what you're telling me, you seem to be diagnosed with something called the broke boy syndrome. This is what happens when you're extremely poor, and you have no motivation to make any money. Alright, you know what? I got a solution to help you. Let me call my boy Balji real quick, and I'll, I'll see what he can do, alright? Yo, Balji, I need you coming over here. I got, a, I got a patient with broke boy syndrome. How can we help him out today? Yeah, man, what's good with you, man? Dr. Snacky told me that you had some broke boy syndrome, something like that. What you got? What's your, what's your problem, bro? You're going to tell me so I can help you out. It's just like I said, bro. I, I got 10 bucks. I don't know what to do. I wish I had more money to invest, man. I try to get into selling snacks, but no one will help me. All right, look, because you're a patient of my boy, Dr. Snacky, I'm going to see what, how much money I got. Let me see my pocket. Look, I know I don't got much right now, but I'm going to give you 200 right now. You can go invest this, go buy some snacks at Costco. I want to see you get your snacks and then come back to me when you're done, all right? I'll see you in the next video, but you better be there when I show up. <sighs> all right, man. Thank you, bro. You you really blessed me, man. I won't disappoint you. What is going on, guys? Snack out here. Back for another video. And who would have thought that we would return to Costco after eight months? I haven't been here forever. So we are here actually today to do our little restock that I told you guys about. We're going to buy the best-selling candy, best-selling chips. And we're going to also, we're going to bring those to a sneaker event. And we'll show you a video on what I do to sell them. And basically this video is just going to be me buying and preparation. So we're going to go pick out the best candies, best chips, and then I'll show you guys what I decide is best. Okay guys, so so far we have four options right now. One of the chocolate variety packs. These are all very popular American candies, M&M's, Twix, Snickers. And we have some chocolate. We also need to have balance of candy. So we got sour ones, sweet ones, all the flavors of the Skittles in there. And these are having a sale, so they're $4 off. And the new product that my dad recommended is the kinder bueno crispy bars so these were costing uh 15 for this box was it 15 yeah 15 and 20 pieces 20 packs with two piece inside and he said I, he think i can sell for two dollars so we're going to try this out and if we can sell for two dollars that's a lot of profit right there last but not least we have sour patch watermelon when i was selling it in school this thing used to sell out super fast so i think this will be a good seller okay so let's update the cart we only added two more items since we got the other chocolate chocolates but number one is the Kit Kat, all right? I, these have 36 in them. If you guys remember me selling them back in school, these were sold super quick. I sold like 20 a day. At the meet, they should be very popular and sell fast. Secondly, I think at the meet, I can sell these Slim Jims for a little higher than I used to. 50 cents each, or in other words, a dollar for two. And there are 120. I can sell it and make $60 off of this, and this only costed me 20. So if I can get this done, it's a three times return on my investment. All right, so here we are at the chip aisle. And... I have to decide what chip is the most popular, so I want to get a different variety. I only want to get one box of each because I don't want to spend too much, but the first box we get is the Hawaiian selection. Whether they like normal chip, uh, something sweet, or something spicy, they have one to choose from. So this was a good option, and I can sell them for a dollar each. Alright, let's come over here. And I don't know if the day is going to be hot or cold, but spicy chip tend to very always do well. So I think I might have to go with one of these because a lot of people love to eat spicy chips whether even if it is hot or not. But depending on the weather, I have to see how well they can sell. Alright, and for lastly, I will have to get the normal mix. Because we have Hawaiian and spicy, now we need some more flavor that are savory. So salty stuff like chili cheese and cheddar onion. These stuff is people like a lot. Alright, so three boxes in total. Alright, so we finished walking around the Costco. Picked out the best items that I thought would sell the best. Now look at what we have here. Um, this should be around a hundred and maybe fifty dollars, two hundred dollar maximum, and I can sell everything for close to double the profit. So if do if things go really really well, I can make another one of these videos next time, and then I can just use that money and keep reinvest. But anyways, you guys can see the soda is on the bottom. Those are actually bottles instead of cans. The reason for this is because I think that when people buy a drink at the event, they have a bottle so they can close the lid and walk around and keep it in places where it won't get knocked over. All right, just one last quick look. All the candies, chocolates are all here. Chips on the bottom. And I think we're ready to go pay. All right, all right so here we are checking out. The guy's scanning the items, you know, one by one. And then we can slowly take a look at what the total is going to be. So you can see adding each item up. Even more here too. And we'll see the total later on. I'll cut to that, but I hope it's going to be under $200. So we'll see. You guys can see that one fifty twenty nine. All right. All right, so we just got home now. Packed up pretty much all the stuff in our trunk. 
Look at that, all the chips, all the candy and stuff like that. And we're gonna unload it and then now is the preparation phase. We're gonna show you what I plan to do to pack up these things and display it efficiently when I get there at the show, how I'm gonna put it on my table and basically how many I can carry it with me to there. So I'll go show you that right now, but let's go unload it and I'll show you guys when I'm done. All right, so we are back home guys. And before we get to unboxing these candies, right now we're gonna make a plan on how we are actually gonna pack it all and bring it there. Cause obviously I'm not gonna wait till I get there to open all these boxes and bring all the junk, all the cardboard plastic wrap and have it there at the meet where I'm not sure there's gonna be a garbage can nearby and stuff like that. So I'm gonna open it up and make a nice presentation try to find a box to display it in and find the best way to bring it for you. But I'm gonna be unboxing a couple of candy right here in front of you for the camera and showing you guys what I mean by that. And then after that, I'm gonna be bringing the stuff there and you'll cut to the next day. So tomorrow, today is a Friday at this part of the video, but the rest of this video will continue on Sunday where I'm actually at the meat selling candy and the shoes. So we'll have to bring some change too. So I'll show you guys that later. But anyways, let's go open some candy. All right guys, so this is what I mean. So you can see we have the Kit Kat box here. Let's just with the knife. What I mean by showing it for this plate is, let's say we cut it open, right? And we, let's just get this wrapping off real quick. After we have the wrapping off, I gotta take off more cardboard. So we're gonna peel this part up too. Right, you guys see this? It's gonna get peeled back and now I'm gonna have to display it like this. So I'm gonna have to like fold it and like put it in there like this. All right, that way I can like actually sell my candy. So I can fold it like this too. And I can basically, I'm probably I'm just gonna peel it off, but I'm gonna leave the cover on. But however, I'm not gonna like leave it stay stuck on. I'm probably gonna like have it open like this, maybe fold it back and have it on my table like this, where it's elevated, standing up. You guys can kind of see the angle and basically stuff like that. So another example would be like, Say I'm selling like this kind of chocolate right here. I can't have it because this kind of lid is closed, right? It's taped down. So let's open this actually real quick and let's see what we can do. So we're gonna cut this open right this, tape on two sides. So these were very popular back in school when I was selling candy, right? M&Ms, Twix, Milky Way, and Snickers. These were really good ideas and good sellers. So here's how it's kind of packaged up. If you guys remember, I'll try to show you guys the best as possible without dropping it. But anyways, this is all the candy and uh, I'm probably gonna have it lined up like this. Oh, that fell. But I'm probably gonna have it lined up like this on my table where the lid is like halfway up. You guys can see that. And the candy is still gonna be very visible from the top point of view. So that's what I really mean when I say I'm gonna be displaying stuff. Now, however, for these chips, I feel like I'm not gonna actually cut open the lid. I'm just gonna cut the tape open because I still wanna keep this as a carry handle and I feel like it'd be annoying if I just cut the whole thing open and I can't close it back again. And then the same thing for these uh, Kinders too. I'm pretty sure you guys seen those at your gas stations or whatever. You guys will probably always uh, see them in display. Same thing for those Skittles too. Leave them in the plastic wrap because plastic is really easy to take off. It's just those cardboard coverings that I wanted to kind of remove ahead of time. And that's about it. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, including Slim Jims that are downstairs, and eight. So we have eight items to sell at the meet. We have uh, two types of drinks. I'm going to bring Coke and water. And then we have three different variety packs of chips. So that's actually a lot more. It's about like 18 of them in there. Or no, there's about like 14 of them in there. My bad. And there's a lot of different types of candies and chocolates. So I'm very, very excited. Okay, guys. So apart from candy selling, you guys know it is obviously going to be a sneaker meet still. Another aspect of it is that I'm going to be looking for shoes to buy there. That's one of the main reasons I will be going also. So kind of three reasons why I'm going to go to this meet. One is to sell candy and see how it works there, see if I can make a profit. Number two is trying to buy shoes. And number three is trying to sell shoes. All right. So I'm going to be bringing a couple of racks with me. And I have a list in my mind that I'm also going to write down of shoes that I will be looking for. It's very important when you go to these events that you know what shoes you're looking for to buy and the price, the maximum price you're willing to pay for them before going. So that way, if that you don't give the other person time to pull out their phone and check the apps, check the market of the shoe. If you know the price in your head, you negotiate, you give them the price and you know, before they can even respond and counter offer, like, you know, you try to pressure them, but like not like make them do it. You just try to like keep asking them, you know, like I'll take it right now. I have payment ready, cash in hand, I buy off you, you know, you, you don't gotta worry about anything. And like when you're there in person, it's a lot easier to negotiate and a lot easier to get the deals you want, especially if you have cash and you don't have to, and no, nobody has to go to the post office, nobody has to pay shipping and all that stuff. It's a one-on-one -on -one exchange and it makes everything very easy when everyone's in one place, right? All right, guys, so here's one of the boxes I will be bringing all the candies in, and let's just go put them in one by one. So I'm going to line the varieties pack up. I think this can go in the bottom because it's pretty heavy. I want some of the he heavier stuff on the bottom so it doesn't crush the harder stuff. This can go on the side like that. I'm pretty sure I'm confident it won't fall. Let's just hold this back up. And this will probably go in here for now. I don't think it's going to call because I'm going to be closing this lid too. So I'm pretty confident that will do 
pretty well staying in there. Oh, let's go get these Slim Jims in there. I think we have side that on the side too. Last but not least, we got Sour Patch Kids, but also it's the watermelon flavor. So everything fits pretty well here. This is mainly gonna be the snack drawer of what we're bringing. Don't forget, we also have those three big boxes of chips that we're gonna bring. That's gonna be in a different box for some of my shoes. But anyways, this is for candy. I also, obviously, I went to the bank and I got some change. So let me show you what I did. Okay, you just saw me pack up the candy. Now let's show you what I got in terms of change. So I went to the bank and I went there with a $100 bill and I went to exchange it for a bunch of ones and fives because I know when people are buying candy, they're probably not all gonna have $1 bills. They're gonna be giving me fives and tens and maybe even 20s to break down. So I went and got $41 bills. As you guys can see, if there's like 40, was, I don't know, you're not gonna count them, but there's 40, just trust me, all right? And then the rest of them are gonna be in five. So that means $60 here in five, which should be around, um, was that 60 divided by five it should be around 12 uh five dollar bills so there's the rest of them right here and we're gonna bring this to the meet basically and this will be a separate pocket where i keep change money and there's gonna be another pocket probably like my fanny pack the supreme one that you guys may have seen before that i'm gonna keep the money for the shoes so obviously i don't want to mix the bills up too much it gets things confusing and that's a good way to organize my stuff all right without further ado let's go pack the shoes pack the chips and let's show you what box i'm gonna use Okay, so we are downstairs and I think I found a box that is big enough to go. So this is the Amazon box. It should be able to fit all my chips and shoes in there. Let's go see. All right, you guys can see that we have the chips in this box. There's three boxes and then inside there are some shoe boxes too. Maybe you guys can see that. I don't know, it may be a little hard. There's three chip boxes in here. And anyways, that's not enough. So I realized that we need to get another box to put some of these shoe boxes in because I definitely need to bring these. And uh, we're gonna have to pick up another box. So I think we're gonna total in three boxes. One of these big ones, the small one, we just had all the candy and then we're gonna need a box for all these shoes. So it was a lot more stuff than I expected. Also, I'm bringing this little fanny pack here, carrying all the stuff I need. Another thing I wanna show you guys is I'm bringing this paper that I cut in half. It's basically regular printer paper, eight and a half by 11. Just cut it in half and I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna basically be writing the size of the shoe and the price that I want on it. So that's gonna be very helpful to save people time. and basically let people see the prices before they come up and give me an offer so that's really really useful you guys don't want to be using a lot of index cards paper i feel like paper is cheaper than sticky notes and index cards from what i've noticed you can get like 300 pieces of paper for like a dollar versus like a pack of sticky notes it's like two or three dollars all right all right yo what is up guys so we are actually at the meet the location right now we're setting up back here in this parking lot and we just parked our truck here we're gonna go set up and try to find a very good spot to locate our stuff you can see the event has not even really started yet it's just the vendors here that are trying to set up and talk around real quick figure things out of the situation if you guys feel what i mean we got our money bag over here got our snacks got our shoes and we're ready to go all right guys so this is what the setup is looking like we got our snacks down below we got our candy shoe shoes everywhere we got some drinks got some more shoes jordan ones these got jordans sakai's all types of that stuff yeah, we're gonna try to buy more shoes remember the main purpose here is not me trying to sell shoes it's me mainly testing how selling snacks work and me trying to buy shoes at the meet because hopefully there's some good deals here and i really want to catch them so let's go get into it and let's see if i buy anything all right guys so after further setup we got more sales i think this guy sold some snacks for me when i was gone i also sold a bag of m ms just as we started say hi to my guy andrew right here he's a hard worker he deserves everything anyways uh i walked around and looked at the prices today and there were a lot of very high prices that i was not trying to buy at because i need to make my profit too so i think i'm gonna wait until more regular attenders come and we'll see if there's some buyers for my shoes all right so about one hour into the meet i think i sold about five snacks so far and this kid's gonna buy something from me so what you want man uh can i get some sour patch kids yeah do a dollar yeah a dollar yeah a dollar give you like 50 cents nah i'm i can't do that for a month please man you, you want to sure? take it for a dollar yeah i'll take it take it for a dollar all right thank you that guy's money That's made my brother in law all right so i walked around and while i was walking around some of my friends actually helped me sell cake at the table $14 so far after that and I, I got like six more sales I say we're about $25 in sales right now so let's see how much we can get more at the end of this meet it's about 12 o'clock right now so the meet's almost halfway over but I have a better hope that after 12 when lunchtime comes around they're gonna sell like look at the table real quick some of the some of the top layers of the candy are gone you can tell someone took some skittles over there chip boxes I've been taken from too so overall it's not that bad and I definitely would come again and sell these snacks all right guys another hour into the meet last time i checked in we were at like 25 dollars now we have to add in like whatever's in here i would say like now ten dollars so we're like 35 dollars into the meet right now 
you see this guy's face, please report him to the police. Anyways, shout out my guy, little Timmy right there. Cast out some smoke grace from some of my plug people bay, here. Plug a bay. Follow the plug a bay. All right, guys. Another dude just made twenty dollars. I sold five dollars of snacks. Gave that guy fifteen change. Let's look at how the snacks are doing. One of the boxes are almost emptied. A little bit has been taken from the chocolate here. A little bit of Kit Kats. A couple Slim Jims. A couple Sour Patches. And uh, sold only like two drinks, but you know that's pretty fine. And you can see we have some Skittles that have been taken out of there too. Let's look at the chip boxes too. Chip boxes. Empty right now, so I would say at least $45 in sales so far. All right, you can see one of my employees is helping me sell snacks right there. We got the snacks. There we go. Let's go grab the snacks for him. We're in the car right now, we're just chilling. But he's gonna get the sale for us. We're spectating them, he's grabbing them the food. Yes, sir. Got this money, got the money. So, my shoe too. All right, guys, let's get a situation check. Right now, we sold a lot more snacks. I say we're about eighty dollars sold right now. Eighty dollars of item sales. The last sour patch we got. Look at that, like only like six bags left. Slim Jim's taken two. All M and M's and only one Milky Way left. All the you know, M and M's are gone. So I would say it's pretty successful so far. Uh, the meat has started to die down. If you guys look around, there's been a difference in the people that are walking around already, and less people coming by. So we'll see what else we can accomplish later on. How's the meat going for you, Wilson? Any words of advice for people? Um, just buy, buy a lot. Yeah, just buy a lot. Right, bro. Show off your money so, so people are able to, to work with you. If, if you don't pull off your money, they're not going to work with you. dollars for the rest of that. Alright, so right now, I came back and it's about 2 o'clock right now in the afternoon almost. I made another $36 here and uh, still going strong. Uh, hopefully we sell out one at least one of the boxes at the end of the meet. If not, I will save it for the next time we show up so we can sell those too. Alright guys, so end of the day, you see we got a lot of money made from selling snacks. Very thick pockets right here. Half the boxes of chips are missing. Uh, most Sour Patch is gone. That's almost all missing. Kit Kat wasn't too popular, so I was a little surprised. And drinks, I sold about like five of them, so Jesus. nothing to complain about. Anyways, we'll see how next time goes, and then I'll go count this up when I get home and show you guys how much I made. Alrighty guys, so today was a pretty tiring yet eventful day is how i would describe it we made decent snack sales sold a couple of shoes and now we're here at home trying to talk about all that went down so in the beginning we went to the meet we tried to set up but the video started out with me in costco i was restocking i had to choose the best candy to buy for what i thought would sell best at, a, at one of those meats one that turned out to be one of the best sellers was uh sour patch kit sour patch watermelon and kit kat was doing pretty well and also um some hot chips were doing pretty well too because it was kind of cold there but anyways, so we got the candy, got the chips, brought it to the meat, we set up. We had a little bit of delays and stuff like that. But I realized the meat wasn't really good for buying stuff. A lot of people were charging really high prices, putting uh, shoes above market value. And I couldn't buy those things because there was no room for me to make profit. So I figured that selling would be better there next time. But anyways, here's how much we have in our wallet. Let's go count it real quick. It should be a good amount. Like, it's pretty thick right now. So I'm going to assume it's around like 100 something. I hope that's how much I made. I have to take out like $200 though because I sold a shoe and it was part of it. So let's just go take that out real quick. There should be like in 20s or something right here. Like, yeah, like $200 from 20 should be like taken out. So we're in one, two, three, four, five. It's a hundred right there. Another one, two, three, four, five. So that's like another hundred. There's so $200 taken out already. So everything in here is like how much we made in snack sales today. Like just sales, like not, not profit, but like this is how much we made. So let's go count it now. So we got one, two, three, four. Five, six, so 20 in here, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. What? <clears throat> One thing I want to let you guys know is that I have not counted $1 bills like this in a long time. You guys remember back in my old videos when I used to sell candy at school, I used to be counting these bills a lot. And maybe the reason why is because like everyone obviously plays in ones, but I sound a little tired right now because it's, you know, obviously I woke up early this morning and we didn't come home till late. Later this night, so we got 20 right here, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 35 right here, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 6, 57, 58, 59, 60. So we're about 60 right now, that's how much $60 in one would look like. Are 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 
adding 10 each time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 80. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 90. 1, 2, 3. All right, so there's three here. All right. So there's like 93, I believe. And the rest in here are like bigger bills. So like they're like fives and tens and twenties. Let's go count them up real quick. Separate it by the size of the bill. And we'll see what we end up with. So we ended up with 93, but let's just make it 90 so it's easier to count. So in terms of fives, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So fifty dollars and five. So that's a hundred and forty right now. Because we took out the three dollars. 140. Then we got 150. 150 plus the remaining of this money hold on we got 155 so then there should be like six dollar bills six bills no five bills here so 155 so 255 dollars in snack sales guys that is pretty crazy and i don't know what to say about that usually at school days i would only get 100 dollars in sales at the meet we got 255 dollars in snack sales so if you guys don't think that's insane well i definitely do this meet was pretty cool. It charged me only $5 to entry because I split the table fees with my friends. But overall, this meet was pretty good. Yes, and see, we made pretty decent money selling snacks. I only made like $30 shoes, $30 from selling like two shoes there. But you know what? I'm not going to complain because the snacks made up for a lot of it. And the snacks have a high return mar margin besides shoes too. So I think next meet, all the candy that I didn't sell, I'm going to wait till next meet and sell it there. But I may just specialize in snacks and have a own table by myself for snacks instead of mixing it snacks and shoes because I noticed that this works very, very well. And it could be even better for snacks if I have more variety and a better table location next time. Mine was kind of near the end this time. So I maybe that had to do with a little bit of customers. But I think if I put it in the middle area where a lot of people are passing by and they see it, they'll definitely support my business. So without further ado, guys, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video and comment what your favorite part of this video was and what your favorite candy from the restock was. So I know it's a very long video. This is going to take me a little while to upload. But anyways, you guys hopefully enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. Then I was happening like what's happening. All odds were against me like Croatia and I'm Rakitish. Started off with a camera because nobody else saw the picture. Huh? Times my earnest by 13. Get my bank account a bar mitzvah. Huh?